This week on the 414, we're going to set about learning from an incredibly rewarding discipline, which is only often given proper consideration by B2C marketers. The discipline is consumer psychology, but it is of course completely relevant to our sector, which is why I thought it would be a great idea to have an expert in the field share some high-level insights for how B2B marketers can level up their game and results by bringing it into their strategy. Hi, I'm James Rostance, and welcome to The 414. Each week with some of the greatest and most interesting minds in B2B marketing. My guest today is someone who puts his expertise as a consumer psychologist to great use by helping the category leader who he works for continually reach new heights through intricately understanding their customers' wants, needs, and desires. Welcome, Nick King. Hi, James. Thanks for having me. Lovely to be here. Absolute pleasure. Uh, well, Nick, could you start by uh, giving us an example of what it is that you do? Great. Well, uh, I work for Auto Trader, and Auto Trader is a large automotive marketplace, and we have a vision to lead to be the lead the digital future of the automotive marketplaces. It's a quite a bold claim, and to do that, what we need to do is make sure that we have and bring our cons our customers with us, and we have two customers: trade and consumer. Trade people are, of course, consumers too, so consumer psychology plays a part when we're just trying to understand people. So we use this data, research and insight to help them understand how the world has evolved, how the world has changed, and how they need to keep up with the times. Okay, so uh, where in your business, or perhaps any other, would your role sit? So it sits in marketing, it sits with sales, it's really to try and help. My role really is to be a philanthropist, if you like, to make sure that people get a big bang, bigger bang for their buck. So when they're spending their money advertising with us, they get a better return on investment. So if you understand your customer, and of course for a dealer, a trader, they need to understand the consumer and how the world has changed. If you understand that, you can improve your service. So that's what, we try, that's what I try and do. We try and do it through masterclasses without being humble, without being too arrogant, because for many of our customers, our trade customers, we are their biggest expense. So we want to make sure we're giving them some good value back. So what I do is we go out on, try and actually train, not training's the wrong word, we try and actually help them understand how the world has changed. If they spend a bit more time on their digital forecourt, they will improve their response because in automotive, most of the research now happens online. 80, 89% of research happens online and far less of it happens on the physical forecourt. So you have to make sure your digital forecourt is really flying. So that's what we try and teach or help. Okay, so in doing what you do, uh, what is it that uh, you set out to achieve and in your own words, what can a company get out of a similar approach? So, what we, so we, we, we set out to try and get people to understand that the world has changed. Because if, if they don't get and move with the times, there's a good chance they could go out of business. So it's tough. So we went out and actually started to physically talk to them. And it's quite exhausting driving up and down the motorway. So I literally did 40, 50,000 miles in a year, did two or 300 sessions promoting ideas on how you can improve response, how by answering the phone even, by having fantastic pictures, by pricing to the market, lots of stuff for which our market is seemingly quite obvious. But we did this, it was quite exhausting though. And we thought if, we're, if our vision is to be the lead the digital future of the automotive marketplace, why are we physically doing this? Why aren't we trying to do this digitally? Why can't we try and do this with a webinar? So my colleague, Guy Dunn, who's a tech expert, and I, he bought a tiny little camera from Curry's, 29 quid. We sat in his living room and we did our first basic webinar. And we managed to speak to customers without having to drive up and down the road. It was fantastic. It's like, oh, this is quite good. We did a few more of these. This evolved into actually the company saying, we're getting a lot of people watching these now live. You haven't got to drive up and down the motorway. Let's invest and try and make it look good though. Because we present a lot and we looked at various other webinars and they were just a voice without slides or a voice and we wanted to make it look like telly. 
wanted to make it look compelling. So we invested and bought some 4K high quality HD quality cameras, built a studio. We now have vision mixing. You can do like a third so we can make it actually look like you're watching TV. As a result, now we have hundreds of people watching our webinars every week. Even better, they're actually on demand so you can watch them again and still ask questions. And we use a company called On24. I don't work for On24, but there are other suppliers are available. But they allow us to serve this great, great pro product, if you like, program and keep it available. Okay, so um, so in the, in, on the point of what uh, could a co another company get out of a similar approach then, where, by the sounds of it, you're, you're delivering uh, real value to your customers, um, what would you say that another company could get out of a similar approach? Yeah, it's so one of the challenges any company will have is how do you get your message across to your customers? How do you get your customers to listen to you? Yeah. We will, like anyone could be sending emails, sending letters or doing stuff on social media and you expect, and we expect as a consumer to actually, everyone should understand it and read it. But of course they don't because they're busy. So the beauty of doing it this way is we do live in a visual world. We have got two eyes. We do, if we're lucky enough to have two eyes still, and we still like to watch and listen. And the high quality TV style, short, punchy webinar seems to work because it means you can interact. So I would recommend anyone starting to just start. We just started, we did it very basically with a very small system and we just promoted it. But we made sure that when we presented, we presented well and we rehearsed and it looks slick. If it's boring, slow, turgid, what you're gonna do? You're gonna turn off. So you've got to actually perform, not just talk. You've got to present, not just talk. You've got to make it look like telly. If it looks like telly, then I'll probably watch it. So is there anything that, um, that you see in terms of other businesses failing to understand their customers properly, or maybe missing a huge opportunity by not giving it proper thought and attention. Well, yes, and it goes to the basic psychological premise of the primacy effect. The primacy effect simply states that the first thing that happens in any relationship has a direct impact on how the rest of the relationship will go. So something negative straight away is gonna turn me off. So you basically, you've gotta make it good without being blindingly obvious it's got to be interesting bright sparky and it's got to look professional and you have to do that through practice 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 there's no excuse for it there's no you can't just wing it when i do a webinar with my teams here when our teams here do one we rehearse we rehearse we rehearse as if we were going on stage to do it live we rehearse so that when the camera goes click it looks good so primacy th primacy effect that first thing that happens in any kind of relationship if it's negative, the negative things sit in your brain, they have a real impact, you've got to get rid of it. Absolutely, I, I would 100% agree with that. So what is your current favorite example of um, consumer insights being put to use with great effect? Well, great question. It's really understanding your question, understanding your, understanding your audience, sorry, uh, understanding your audience and making something completely valid and viable to them. And in, in terms of a, a real world example, who, who in, in, your, in your mind is doing that amazingly? Uh, preferably so, in the B2B world. Yeah, in, in, yes, in, in B2B, if I was a trader and I wanted to buy something from uh, a plumbing store, I, I won't name who they are because it's, it'll be advertising, but in a trade trade business, there's a well-known plumbing store which allows you to go online to order and collect within one minute. One minute, okay. that is amazing. So you could be sat in your car, you could go online, you could order your part, walk into the store and pick it up. Collect within one minute. B2B, that is actually tra it's a, it's a trade, trade business. That's amazing, that's thinking outside the box, that's trying to deliver some kind of digital excellence and try and make you feel, make you feel like you're winning. Um, and that's, that's presumably because they've gone out there and, and purposely found out, well, I'm already saying this, what, they've purposely what, gone out and found out what their customers want. Exactly. So, but what you really need to do, uh, and it's never assume, is go and ask. And what we do all the time is a huge amount of research. We have tons of data on the live basis, on an ongoing basis. We understand our customers, but we go out and we ask questions all the time. 
And then funnily enough, if you ask questions and then build things based on what your customer wants, there's a good chance they're going to use it. Not rocket science. <laughs> Absolutely. And would I be right in also thinking that uh, linking back to your own, um, uh, I, don't know, I don't like to use the word solution, uh, but uh, what you're doing with, with your high-end webinars, oh, uh, what, was the, what was the feedback that led you to uh, know that that was the way to go and that's what you need to deliver to yeah. go to deliver excellent customer service? Great. Okay. So we knew that, we, that, that customers uh, didn't think we were good value, that we were just an expense to them. So when we went out and actually started to run these sessions and we would get feedback forms and we would ask people, you know, what did you think of the session? Would you recommend it? It's a standard NPS kind of questioning. But even better than that, we, we actually started to look at the financials. We got our finance team to look at people that have been to these sessions or watched us versus similar companies that hadn't. What's the result? And we did find that people that listen to the advice and act on the advice that we give tend to stay with us longer and are more successful in their businesses. And you could actually financially quantify it. So it's lovely to see if you actually listen, take part and actually use the advice, it works. So there was a financial reason to do it too. Nice. Well, that's ultimately, hey, the, the driving reason for being in business. Uh, although I suppose you could also put some extra bits in there about um, uh, keeping customers happy long term, right? To yes. grow the business. Of course, of course, of course. Um, and if you keep, ha keep customers happy long term, what do they become? Advocates. And that's, you can't ask for better advertising than that. Nice. Well, what would be your advice uh, to companies who recognize the potential value of, of all of this, uh, but really need a solid place to start? Yes. Um, I think you need to ask yourself, how, how easy is it for me in a company to go out and talk to my customers? If they're, if they're trade, if they're consumer, how easy is it for me to do it? And if this is a problem and if it's an issue, what is stopping you doing that? We really did start with a twenty nine ninety nine camera from Curry's and a living room and a tiny little microphone. And we just bought an off the shelf webinar package. It was I think it was a thousand pounds a year for a year, unlimited usage. So it wasn't particularly high quality, but it worked. And we, start, and we just started and we sent out emails. We asked our customers, actually, we know you can't come and see us. We know you haven't got time to come out and spend two hours in a meeting room with us. How about if we come to you virtually? You haven't even got to leave the office and it'll be half an hour and you can log in and watch it. And funny enough, no surprise, the response was, oh, that'd be good. So we tried it. It grew. It grew. But actually what we wanted to do was make it more high quality. So basically just start and then you can set some KPIs and measure. Measure how it measure your response. Are the people who've watched these events, are they now spending more with you, more engaged, staying longer, churning less, all of the standard good sales KPIs. If this is happening, great, you must be doing something right. Oh, and finally, uh, looking to the future, and this is a very top level question, um, what impact do you think it will have? Uh, and to what extent do you envisage companies embracing consumer psychology within the B2B world? Yeah. Um, I think it even goes, it goes back to marketing that we all did from the 60s and 70s. It hasn't changed. No matter who you are, we are all a consumer. And how we interact is important and how we get on with people is important. And if you can keep honest, true, transparent, easy, if you can do these, because this is in our world today where we are so engaged with technology, where we're all impatient, where we want everything now, where we insist and we, in, in transparency, if you are doing this and demonstrating this, then you are going to win. And technology is going to help that, but it, keep it down to the basics. Simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. It's a lovely phrase. And I thought, who said this? It must be some technological genius. Was it Elon Musk from Tesla and PayPal or, or Steve Jobs? Actually, no, the person that came up with simplicity is the ultimate sophistication was Leonardo da Vinci. 500 years ago in an era for him where technology was wood nails and string electricity hadn't even been invented so if it was true for him it's got to be true for us today in our overly technological world <laughs> that is an awesome point to end on um nick thank you ever so much for joining me today great thanks james lovely to be here thank you
And if you enjoyed watching and you'd like to learn more insights and wisdom from some of the greatest and most interesting minds in B2B marketing, then please do follow the, our page now or subscribe to the podcast. You can also visit the414.net to watch previous episodes. I'm James Rostance. Thank you for watching.